attacking interview. Um, that's actually the Java-related one this evening. Um, and I would say, when we want to start, first thing when, when I think of Java and what's now happening is, is, is Jigsaw. There was a, a, a ballot where Jigsaw was basically refused, and, and, and I have a, an opinion there, uh, obviously, but uh, just what, what, what happened there, actually? I, I would not, I did not expect that that happens. Yeah, well, uh, the ballot, uh, like a month ago, we had this uh, uh, ballot in, in the EC, and uh, I think it was 13 no votes and 10 yes votes. And, and prior to that ballot, we had lots of discussions going on in, in the EC, and we also had a meeting in the same day. And there were so many arguments why you should vote no, but there were nobody who actually vo voiced their opinion that you should voice, uh, vote Yes. So, so nobody actually said, yes, you have to vote yes because of this and that. But uh, there were lots of opinions why you shouldn't. And uh, uh, both Werner and I are on the EC, and both of us voted no. And uh, my uh, reasoning for voting no was exactly that. Nobody could actually convince me that it's good enough. And there were so many arguments that said it, they need a little bit more time. And it, especially for me is that the tooling was broken. Like, you, you couldn't use Maven anymore. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, those 30 days, uh, they approached the community and have had discussion, had had uh, lots of things going on on the lists. And now uh, they've solved those, many of those problems or are on the way of solving them. So uh, actually today is the uh, renewal, or the, the actual, what's it called? The, the, yeah, the, the next ballot. And, uh, right now, it, it's it's gonna pass. Yeah. Um, that would, Werner. Yeah, no? yeah. So I also heard similar concerns by, for example, uh, contributors to the Maven project uh, on various mailing lists or Twitter or other places, and I got in touch with them and asked them if uh, some of them their concerns had already been uh, solved. And at the time, they said, uh, in some cases, they weren't even ignored, or they were not really uh, answered at all, and that was also one of the main reasons uh, why I voted no. But since then, it looks like we we had a discussion uh, from the Open JDK team, where, for example, Dalibor Topic uh, reported uh, during our last EC call, and uh, looks like most of those concerns uh, and issues were either solved or they have a roadmap uh, how to solve that in a way in the near future. So uh, that, there seem to be no real showstoppers uh, that would justify another no vote. So I guess I'm, I'm also inclined to vote in favor of it this time. Um, it's Jigsaw is not the only feature that comes with Java 9. Can you tell the audience um, also a bit what, what are the other most important features for you? Uh, well, uh, I, I think that uh, Jigsaw is definitely the, the most uh, important feature. Uh, other features are more, uh, I guess, nice to have, uh, like the, the J shell, which people have been talking a lot about, and it, it's, uh, I think it's a very good idea. I, I, I have a little hard time seeing that it's so exceptionally nice to have, but uh, I'm probably <laughs> going to get used to it. Uh, so, so that's a nice thing. There are some some cool factory methods in the collections framework that will make things easier, especially when you write tests to just create maps and, and, and lists easier. But that's kind of just syntactic sugar on top of it. So I, I don't know, Werner, if you have any comments on that. Well, I guess especially with the J shell, uh, I was also asked about it a couple of months ago, and I see quite a few use cases also on the EE side, for example, things where you currently have uh, proprietary or some additional uh, DSLs, for example, when it comes to web logic tooling and others, and ideally, it, on the EE side, it may take until 
for example, Java EE9 really embraces uh, SE9, but then it's definitely quite easy to imagine that some of the administration and tooling on the server side can also make use of the J shell uh, rather than having, uh, I don't know, when there A uh, uses Groovy, the next one uses Scala, and then there's another one using uh, Chiton or something else. So I guess for the tooling, there may also be a more unified way across different vendors and different containers by embracing that. Um, when we now would just leave the, the platform as it is a bit, and but not yet arrive at Java EE, um, what what are the the projects or initiatives that that you you find the most interesting? I would say the last couple of months in the, related somehow to Java, but not Java EE and not Java SE. Uh, well, uh, I I find Kotlin. Uh, be uh, something I want to explore. I haven't tried it yet, but I, I've heard people who, who's using it is is uh, saying it, it's a pretty cool feature. And uh, the main reason why I want to learn that is uh, mostly because it's it's going to be a first class language on on Android, and we have a lot of Android projects in in my company. So so just to be able to keep up with those. Developers, I think Kotlin is something I definitely want to learn. Yeah, I've also uh, worked with Kotlin at least on, on conferences uh, at Java Zone a, a couple of years ago. Uh, they had a presentation there, and I recently with a fellow EC representative from Hazelcast who started the Düsseldorf uh, Kotlin user group uh, because. Uh, Trivago has a lot of uh, use cases for Android, uh, so I guess they also have people in the company that work with Kotlin, and that, that's one of the reasons why the, why the meetup and the user group started to be founded there. And for example, in uh, the, some of the JCP projects, including uh, the Java Money project, there was also, in addition to the Groovy support, we already got uh, somebody proposed a new module for Kotlin support there. And I guess especially on Android uh, for financial transactions or wallet uh, features, I guess that, that's something that uh, is also worth exploring. Definitely, definitely we will do, because I'm also looking at Kotlin actually. And I, I must say for the first sight, I like it very much. Um, now, when we go more in the enterprise context, there were lots of discussions, uh, discussions or, or about Java EE, um, eight especially, which was kind of not not standing still some times ago. Um, what's now the state? It's it's ongoing now again. Uh, yeah, EA eight is definitely ongoing, and it's it's coming in in July. I think they they have the the, the final date, and and uh, all the specifications are in on track to making that deadline, and. Uh, uh, well, when we have, we wished for more, I think, for EE8, and especially uh, we, we wanted more microservice kind of helping support from, from the platform. Uh, we're not getting that now, so, so EE8 feels like, more like a maintenance re release to EE7. We, uh, there's not that much new stuff coming. It's, it's more or less updates to the existing specifications. There are a couple of new ones, uh, but uh, it, it has a feel of uh, being a, a not very big update. Yeah, especially the completely new additions, I guess, would be mostly JSON binding, uh, although that also builds on top of the existing uh, JSON processing, so it makes use of existing functionality and then adds some more, but it uh, sort of rounds up the picture of uh, JSON dealing with JSON, and of course the security JSR is also something that security has been in a way rudimentary state, I think almost since J2EE times, uh, and now we're trying to add some new features and also around single sign-on or uh, OAuth and other things. Although, as it looks like now, I guess the, the first version of the security API may only 
provide some of the foundations, uh, while, for example, full OAuth support, I guess that's something that either maintenance release or even a, a new version of the security standard uh, will have to provide. And um, when I would ask about the security JSR, um, actually one, one of the pain points when I was porting applications from one application server to the other were, were always that kind of security stuff because you have to, to re reconfigure that for each application server vendor. And with the security JSR, um, I don't need to do that. I, could, I can bring along the security functionality basically in, 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 the, in the bar file. Is that the case? Uh, it, it's partly the case. So, so some of the uh, uh, configuration is, is now uh, can, uh, can you configure using annotations. Uh, but there are still, there will be still be uh, vendor proprietary stuff left. But, uh, we're, we're creating a foundation to be able to do, to do it better later, more or less. Mm. Yeah, but that's also not not so different, for example, with uh, Spring Security or others uh, that in most cases you would have to do something uh, that's different from container to container. Um, nevertheless, um, microservices, many, many people want to build microservices, and as you said, uh, an application server um, or the Java EE8, it doesn't focus so much on microservices. But, but I, when, I, when a developer still wants to use some of the EE stuff or feels comfortable with it, are there alternatives? Things that are smaller or higher? Uh, definitely. There is an a initiative going on called MicroProfile, uh, which is a subset of, of Java EE, where uh, you can create basic uh, microservices. Uh, and and uh, uh, the, the subset is, is, consists of, of uh, JXRS, CDI, and JSMP. So, so that should be enough to make like the really simplest service. But if you need some more advanced things, uh, you probably need to, to b bring in some of the EE technologies anyway. Uh, th there are uh, also interesting things going on in the microprofile projects, like configuration services, uh, health checks, and also security. Uh, stuff that potentially can be JSRs later. And, and uh, that is kind of the, the idea behind MicroProfile is to have a playground for new technologies, try it out and get it to work, and then standardize it as a, as a specification later. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting that many of the proposals or ideas uh, discussed in the MicroProfile community and mailing list, uh, you can more or less look at the, the microservice uh, pattern catalog that's put up on that microservice.io site and almost all of these patterns or many of them uh, are discovered and uh, identified as something that could be of use. So it's, it's almost like uh, if there's not, uh, in some cases, if there may not be a specification as a GSR, then you could still consider some of those projects as manifestations or implementations or whatever you want to call them of those particular patterns. So in, maybe in some cases you may not even see every single one of them being standardized via HSR or an RFC or something, but at least some of them uh, will probably match some of those uh, well-known and identified patterns. Um, another topic, <laughs> Another last topic I would say uh, is the units of measurement JSR. That's something an NSE JSR for me, um, but I don't think it will enter as part of the JDK. Is that right? And what's the state about this JSR? That's a question for Werner, I think. Uh, well, yeah, we, we get those uh, questions a lot, and especially with uh, Java 9 and modularization, uh, it's not that much of a concern. I think you probably remember that with the money JSR it is not that different. That people also kept asking when will it be part of Java SE7 even and Java SE9 and uh, now maybe 10. But we were asked a slightly similar question uh, in Austin during the Chuck meeting as you 
probably remember, and I, I answered that on top of Java SE9, uh, you may probably see some profiles, not just on the EE side, as in micro profile or uh, full EE profile or web profile or whatever, but in, on Java ME, actually, those profiles have been around for a very long time. And on top of Java ME embedded, even though ME embedded may not be uh, the most successful and popular uh, standard at the moment, and we are not 100% sure, at least we heard that Oracle may also be looking uh, for somebody from the community to pick it up, uh, similar to what Ivar uh, thankfully did with MVC. So they are, it looks like they're probably seeking for others to carry the torch in this sector. But what ME already uh, told us is that there are a lot more profiles and some of them are very flexible. So that if one device, for example, has voice recognition like uh, the now or others, then you will need particular standards for voice recognition. And maybe there's another one that deals with image recognition. Then if, if there's an upcoming image recognition GSR, you would add that on a particular device. But you would not put image recognition into the JDK just for the sake of putting it on every single device. It would rather be an optional uh, feature that can be used uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. And it's very similar with uh, units of measurement that we have use cases on the server side with monitoring, uh, performance copilot. I actually have a talk tomorrow uh, about that. And the Java support for it uh, uses uh, the units of measurement GSR. There's smart home, for example, that's also making use of it. And then there are very small devices with Java ME embedded that can also use it. But it may not be something that every single uh, GS, uh, every single Java SE uh, user needs. And that was one of the reasons why, for example, this JSR was is the successor to a JSR that was stopped approximately seven years ago in a similar situation as we have with, with Jigsaw, except that the reconciliation ballot uh, did not pass at the time because exactly for the reason that people were afraid that if this would go into Java SE, it would blow up Java SE. That's exactly the reason why we proposed the units of measurement JSR as a standalone JSR that can be used on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, but it may never be part of a default profile for Java SE, but we are very likely to see some sort of uh, embedded profile or sensor profile or whatever you want to call it, where similar to device I.O., for example, it can be added uh, in a particular use case. Okay. Um, um, very, very last, because it, was, it, it would be unfair to let unmentioned the MVC JSR, because there is some similar story. It was part of Java E. It was more or less uh, removed there, but still it's ongoing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the MVC JSR was removed uh, or proposed to be dropped uh, from EE8 uh, at Java 1 last year, and, and uh, directly after Oracle dropped it, but they didn't drop it entirely. They kind of dropped it in my knee. <laughs> uh, or or uh, I kind of asked for it also, but, uh, but uh, we, uh, they wanted to, to let the community be able to, to finish this JSR. And uh, um, since I've been one of the active members of the, the expert group, it was convenient for me to take it over. Being an, an individual, it was easier for Oracle Legal to give it to me. So, so they signed it over to me, and I brought in uh, Christian uh, Kaltebut from the expert group as a co-spec lead there. And uh, we are uh, just about to get started again. It takes some time, these, these legal stuff and, and transfer things, and, and uh, to get the infrastructure set up, because as it happens, uh, Exactly at the same time it was transferred, also Java.net was closed down. So now we have everything on GitHub. We are uh, changing the license model to go fully open source using the Apache 2 license. So even the TCK is going to be Apache 2 license. So oh, that's uh, great. OK. Time is over. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. And have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you.